So the Cluckin' Bell came out this past Thursday, and after playing it for the first time, my initial impression was, wow, this raid takes a very long time to complete. It's not difficult, it's just that from the kickoff to the finale, it seemed to take forever. But really, that was my only concern. The payout is decent, and what I like most about this heist slash raid is that anyone can do this. If you've just bought GTA 5 and are starting at level 1, you have just found the number one way to make easy money as a beginner. Alright, getting back to the long completion time. I've been trying to figure out some ways to cut down the time and also make things a little easier. If you haven't played this yet, you're going to find out that the biggest obstacle in this raid is simply traveling around the map. Rockstar has really dug its teeth in on this one, meaning you're limited to ground travel only. Anything that flies is off limits. Well, kinda. We'll get to this in a moment. Okay, so I was originally going to put together a full video on each of the setups and finale to give you some tips and tricks on the quickest way I found to get these done fast. It kind of got a little long, and although I may still do this, I thought, for now, I'll just focus on some of the more painful ones. And for me, this was the hit and run setup where you need to steal your transportation. As you may or may not know, you'll be given three choices when it comes to picking your escape vehicle. For me, and I know there's still a lot of debate out there, but for me, I always use option B. This will always give you the fastest vehicle, and as I said at the beginning, the time factor for me for completing this raid is my number one focus. Alright, let's cut to the chase. My vehicle of choice for completing all these setups is going to be the Vigilante, aka the Batmobile. It's got good speed, armor, and more importantly, weapons including lock-on missiles. I found this vehicle to be your best option for completing the setups. Now, I want to emphasize that you do not need to use this. You can use a scooter and still be successful. But again, for me, I'm aiming for quickness, and the Vigilante simply checks all the boxes. Okay, so for the hit and run, there's always going to be two possible locations, and they're both located over at the power station by the wind farm. There's a west location and an east location. The biggest pain point for option B is that in either location, the car you need to steal is located inside a mini fortress. Meaning, there's no way to get inside this area without leaving your vehicle and jumping a fence or other obstacle. This is bad. There's a ton of enemies in this area that'll light you up if you're not careful. If you're on foot, you'll need to ensure you're snapped up and heavily armed. Now, enter the vigilante. Using this vehicle, I can basically start with no armor and won't need to use any of my personal weapons. I'm going to put a timer on these videos to show you how quickly you can get these done. I'm going to cover both of the locations and, again, provide you with some tips and tricks so you can knock these out quickly. Alright, first up, we're going to dive into the east location, both literally and figuratively. If you get this location, it can be a little tricky, but follow my tips and you'll be fine. Once you see that it's located in the east, just turn left and head between the tower and the fenced-in utility area. You want to line yourself up along the edge of the fence area, like you're seeing here. You want to aim for the big hill and the smaller smokestack located here. Just line yourself up, and when you hit the bottom of the hill, ignite the booster and enjoy the ride. Always keep your finger on the missile trigger here, because once you're airborne, you can fire and take out the helicopter. Once inside the fortress, just start firing. Maneuver around until you've eliminated most of the enemies. This one can be a little more frustrating, because there's a lot more areas for the enemies to hide. But again, the Vigilante is great here, because it has lock-on missiles. So just keep driving around until you've done enough damage. Now, don't feel you need to eliminate everyone. You don't need to. You're just trying to kill enough that you can safely exit the Vigilante and get to the escape vehicle to leave. For both of these locations, I always use the ramp nearest the escape vehicle. This is where you'll be exiting once you're done. But you want to make sure there's nothing blocking the escape ramp. There will always be a vehicle parked in front of it, but you can easily just blow it up or move it with the Vigilante. Just make sure it's clear so you have an easy access and escape once you're finished. Another tip you can use in these locations is to park the Vigilante in a way that will provide some protection when jumping between vehicles. But honestly, you shouldn't need to. You'll see here that I can safely exit the Vigilante and get in the escape vehicle without taking much damage and, more importantly, without having to shoot anyone. 
once in the escape vehicle, just head for the railway tracks. I would always recommend using the railway tracks no matter what option you choose, especially if you're choosing the slower vehicle option. The enemies, for the most part, will leave you alone, and it also allows for less corners and obstacles that might slow you down. And that's it. Easy speezy. Okay, next up is the west location. This one, in my opinion, is a lot easier. When you get close, you'll notice the attack helicopter. Like before, just slow down enough and wait until the vigilante locks on, and you're good to go. Once eliminated, head to the right over the small hill to the railway track. Follow the track until you get close to the railway signal and the big tree. This is where you'll want to turn and line yourself up. You just want to make sure you're in line with the general fortress area and you'll be set. From here, ignite the booster and enjoy the ride. Make it a little bumpy, but that's okay. You'll see here that the vigilante has incredible armor. Once inside the fortress, the same as before, just start firing. I like to turn myself around and head to the back. You can eliminate the enemies back here, but I do this because it gives me a chance to turn the car around and then line myself up so I can head to the front with a better line of sight. The biggest drawback for the Vigilante is it's incredibly long. It's not that easy to turn around. But again, just take your time and you'll be fine. Now, just like before, you don't need to kill all the enemies. And you won't kill them all because there'll be some enemies that are parked outside this fortress. But just try to eliminate as many as you can before jumping in the escape vehicle. Just make sure, like before, there isn't any vehicle blocking the ramp. If so, blow it up or just push it out of the way. After this, you are good to go. From here, just leave and hop in the escape vehicle and head for the ramp. And that's it! Once you've exited via the ramp, same as before, head to the railway tracks near the entrance to the facility and then all the way north towards the garage. If you stay on the tracks, it'll take you directly to where you need to go. Another reason for using this method. If you've sustained heavy damage to the escape vehicle, you'll need to get it repaired before dropping it off the garage. But if you're quick, this shouldn't add too much extra time. Okay, so that's the hit and run setup for option B. Again, the most painful piece of the clock and bell raid is the length of time needing to complete some of these missions. But there are ways around it, as you've seen here. And just remember, always work smarter, not necessarily faster. Alright, so that's it my friend, thank you for watching. If you like this video and want to help out, please subscribe, give a thumbs up, and let me know what you think. Are your initial thoughts on the clock and bell good? Bad? Average? Do you like it? Are you having some similar pain points and trying to complete this in a timely manner? If so, drop a comment below and let everyone know. Until next time, be happy, be wise, and plenty be.